it's time to jump off the pitch and jump on some lines. Welcome to the World Soccer Betting Show. Presented by Picks and Parlays. Franco and the Genius World Soccer Betting Show. I'm Franco. That's the Genius. We're presented by Picks and Parlays. And today, we're bringing you some CONCACAF Thunder. Yeah, look, uh, you know, four, four teams in and, uh, you know, hey, wow, the U.S. is here. How about that? Well, it's nice uh, to be back. Yeah, finally, after eight years. It's amazing. We were talking about this yesterday. You know, if you're Italy, you know, hey, we, you won the Euros. But you ha- by the time you get to the World Cup in 2026, when there's, you know, they let everybody in at this point, 48 teams, it's going to be 12 years since Italy's been in the World Cup. I mean, if you miss one World Cup, it's eight years. And now it's really eight and a half. That's almost a whole, that's going to be a whole cycle of players. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, just think about like eight years ago. I mean, you know, kids that are, you know, elementary school or in high school. I mean, high there's school gonna kids be, are graduates. There's going to be a 14-year-old who you've never heard of who is probably going to be starring at the World Cup next time you're there. Yeah, yeah. It's it's amazing. And, uh, you know, that's why, you know, you can't, you know, you, you can't. It, it puts the program back so many years if you don't qualify because, you know, yeah, there's look, there's Nations League stuff, and there's you know Gold Cup for Concacaf, and you know Euros for you know the UEFA teams and stuff like that. But that's you know it's not and that's, the same. That's why it was so important for the U.S. to get back to the World yeah. Cup, particularly ahead of the 2026 version in which it's going to be hosting. It's a chance for for the U.S. team to put what I think is a a group of good young players out on the field who, if it all clicks correctly have a chance to maybe make some noise. Um, before we, we run down, let's just let you know, the four CONCACAF teams in the World Cup, the United States, Canada, Mexico, and Costa Rica. Uh, if you were curious, because of the, the COVID pandemic, it was instead of uh, the usual hex, it was an octagonal. So you had eight teams uh, in the final stage of qualifying. Uh, so you played 14 games home and away against uh, each of the other teams. Canada won the octagonal with 28 points and a plus 16 goal differential. Mexico was second also on 28 points and a plus nine goal differential. The United States qualified automatically in the third spot with 25 points and a plus 11 goal differential. And then Costa Rica went to the uh, intercontinental playoffs after it uh, got 25 points and had a plus five goal differential. Costa Rica then beat New Zealand to qualify for the World Cup. So that's how you got your four CONCACAF representatives. Yeah, U.S. is in Group B. Mexico is in Group C. U.S. is in Group B with England, Iran, and Wales. Uh, Hopefully you watched the show last week. Remember, like, subscribe, ring the bell so you can get it. Uh, Argentina's in. Mexico's in with Argentina, Saudi Arabia, and Poland in Group C. Group E is Spain, Costa Rica, Germany, and Japan, so Costa Rica there. And Group F is Canada with Belgium, Morocco, and Croatia. And uh, if you've watched our shows, you'll know that um, I only picked one team to come out. Kyle picked two from CONCACAF, but you know you make the case for, for, for one of them. So we're just going to go through and give you... You know, an overarching view of each each team, and and basically there, there's interesting, there's some interesting odds in on this, and you can try, try you know, maybe make some money on some of these teams here. Um, Let's start with the the United States. Yeah, you, you know, U.S. You know, I I think we both figured they're coming out here, but you know, once again, it's conditional on the first game. If you lose the first game, you're done. Um, you know, there's some people, I've seen some people picking Iran to come out. Um, I, you know, you, I saw this thing with a scarf. It was a USA-Iran half-and-half scarf. They're doing a story about about that next week uh, in, over in England. You know, I, man, imagine that. Like, bad enough they got Liverpool, Manchester United half-and-half scarves. Um, so, just... Uh, you know, I, and, and I think one thing, the big thing for the U.S. is going to be health. Yeah. Uh, they're one of the teams that I think has been hit really hard by injuries. Uh, you know, Matt Turner, who we think is the number one goalkeeper, is it missed uh, Arsenal's last two Europa League games, which was the games he was going to get. Um, so now he's not going to have any games coming into the the World Cup. Um, you know, Weston McKenney is out with a with a muscle injury. Uh, you know, Josh Sargent, the, the the forward, he's been out of the the, the lineup at Norwich in the English second division. Uh, you know, we knew Christian Pulisic not hurt, but his Playing time has been spotty, to to say the best at at, at Chelsea. Um, you know they got some injuries at, at center back as well. 
Um, so there, there's a little, you know, there's a lot of question marks there heading into to this uh, World Cup for the U.S. team. Yeah, and uh, you know when you look at these, so they, you know, these a lot of sports books will have these markets for, you know, obviously you can pick every game and you can do this stuff and pick group winners, but also you can go through and pick, you know, each tournament, the team to to what they're going to do in the tournament. So for the USA, they have to win the tournament plus twenty thousand. So if you think they're going to win the tournament. If you put down a hundred, you get back twenty thousand. But you know, I'd rather you just give me the, say, <laughs> yeah. se- send me fifty dollars to my Venmo and save the other fifty, and we'll we'll call it a day. Runner up plus ten thousand, eliminated in the semifinals plus fifteen hundred, and eliminated in the quarterfinals plus five hundred, eliminated in the round of sixteen plus two twenty five, eliminated in the group stage minus one twenty five. I would maybe say quarterfinals for the U.S. team. Like that might be, so they will play the. That might be the ceiling for this group. They'll play Netherlands if they get through, right? If they finish second, if they win the well, group, if they win somehow, the group, they could play somebody else. If they win the group, they would play Ecuador or Senegal or Qatar. Senegal, or, yeah. So, I think yeah. At that point, that that point probably quarterfinals is the ceiling. Um, we both have them coming out, so you know I would probably do if I, if I was wagering on this, I, I would probably say eliminated in the round of sixteen because you know right there it's plus two twenty five. That's assuming they get through. So if you think they're going to get through, you know you can actually make some money on this. Uh, you know c- getting through because if they and then if they happen to get to the quarterfinals and you have both of those, you're going to make a little bit more. So. Now Mexico, I had them coming out of Group C. Yeah, you did I, not. I do. I think Poland is better um, to win the tournament. They're plus twenty thousand, runner up plus ten thousand, eliminated in the semis plus eleven hundred. So a little bit well, the better bet- odds. Eliminated in the quarters plus six hundred, round of sixteen plus two hundred. That's the round that usually gets Mexico. Is the round of sixteen? Mexico's actually best finish has, only, has been the quarterfinals, and that was twice nineteen seventy, and then they hosted on, both and then, those times, right? And then so the, again home soil in eighty six. Both times they hosted, they only got to the quarterfinals. Uh, to have them eliminated in the group stage is minus one twelve for me. That's what I would take because I think Poland I, beats them. But it, I to, think round of sixteen. I think is round plus of sixteen. 200. Yeah, I think round of sixteen. Yeah, and I, you, you know when you start to look at this stuff, uh, you know when you're looking at value plays. I mean. You know, maybe that's better than to get them to, to to come out of the group and you know, figuring out a different way to do it. Um, I, I I just I, don't think it's a great Mexico team. Yeah, they're not great, and they never even when they are good, they don't do anything. They always get beat in the round of, in round of sixteen anyway. So like, yeah, they're not great. That group is tough. I don't know. Like, I just, and they're, they're one of they'll put in a good performance at some point in the group stage that will tease you to make you think that. Oh, they could if they do this again, they could get to the quarterfinals. They could get to a semifinal, uh, but then they usually don't. Yeah, they, they won't do it. Yeah, they. I know. And I my, just don't think. And I just don't think this this Mexico team is good enough. If you say if you get a round of sixteen game against say France, because mm-hmm. you're the runner up and France is the winner in Group D, like I just don't think Mexico is going to win that game. Yeah, I don't. I don't see them. They're not. They're not talented enough. Um, you know, and uh, you know those are really. USA and Mexico are the only teams the 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 books have any faith in to do anything because now when so you look at these other two, two teams, very I think long shots Coast, Costa Rica in Group E uh, and then uh, Canada in Group F I think are both long shots to come out of the, those respective groups. Costa Rica is plus seventy five thousand to win the tournament, plus fifty thousand to be runner up, plus fifteen thousand to be eliminated in the semifinals. Plus thirty five hundred to be eliminated in the quarters, plus seven hundred to be eliminated in the round of sixteen, and to be eliminated in the group stage, they are minus twenty five hundred, which might be the I'm, worst odds. Yeah, in the I'm not sure w- why you would put a. There's no point. There's no point yeah, in, in putting yeah, yeah. a bet down on that. Uh, although of those two teams, which one do you think could potentially come out of the group? Costa Rica is, I, I think, has a better chance just because of the way they play. I, I just the Canada. I, I think it's going to be just like. I think Canada has better players than Costa Rica, oh. though. In ter- just in terms of you know being able to be dangerous in what Canada wants to do well, which is sit back, absorb pressure, and then try and break on the counter. I think sometimes the this is stage is different. Like you know, Costa Rica has been there; they've been to the quarters. You know, a lot of these players, and they've you know they've been here and they've competed. 
you know, Canada, you know, CONCACAF qualifying is one thing. This is a, this is a hugely bigger. You're in the fishbowl. I mean, it's big time. I mean, I, I just think they're going to struggle uh, in some of these games, Canada. Uh, of those two, I think it's Canada. Okay. So, you, you so you know, we maybe we maybe we differ on that. Do they but, both finish fourth? In the, do you think you, do we, you have Canada uh, finishing fourth in their group? Yeah, probably. Canada. And I and I have Costa Rica also finishing fourth in its group. Although if if you were asking me which one I thought had a better chance to advance out of the group, I, I'm going to take Canada because I think Canada has more overall talent in in the field of play. Obviously, Costa Rica's got an outstanding goalkeeper in Kaylor Navas who can keep keep it in games but i just think canada with um alfonso davies john uh jonathan david kyle laren um can score a goal now they have to now they have to keep the ball out of the the net as well and uh, i i think canada is a little suspect defensively but again they're going to put numbers behind the ball and then they're going to try and break out and rely on the, the pace of of davies and david to try and uh, get goals and and again I'm not uh, you look at that group F I'm not totally sold on Morocco I know if you go back and listen to to the pod Sean really likes Morocco I'm not totally sold on Morocco it's an older Croatian yeah. team it's an older Belgium team um, Canada being there for the first time obviously I think going to be pumped up uh, so I, I again I think both long shots but if I had to pick between the two of them which one I thought could maybe get out it would be Canada there's some interesting other things here on some of this. Uh, just going to go through just quickly and, and get your thoughts on these. P- uh, player goals. Number of goals scored by the player in the tournament. Alfonso Davies from Canada. Over half a goal is plus 110. Under half a goal, minus 155. So all he's got to do is score one goal and you win the bet. Right, but if he's playing as a, as a left back. Yes. Is he playing as a left back or is he playing as a left winger? I don't know. Right, depending on where they decide to use him. I'll take the over. I think he'll get one. It's pretty interesting value there. Uh, we have Andres Guardado is from Mexico, right? Yes. Over number of goals scored. Over 0.5 plus 170. Under 0.5 Un- minus under, under for Guardado. Uh I'm going to throw out one that is not CONCACAF, but you might be interested in. Where is it? Mitrovic markets here. It's a little bit off the subject, but... Uh, you know I'm just going to take the over, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I just got to <laughs> see if it comes up here. The Wi-Fi is so slow here today. Um I might have to jump on the other Wi-Fi. Uh, Mitrovic over goals. Man, it's not coming up. Riv- riveting podcasting. Yes, exactly. Uh, here we go. All right. Hey, there, it's finally loading. Alexander Mitrovic markets 2022. Over half a goal. Over, over. half a goal minus 305. Over. Under. Over. over. Put, hey, put make your, it a little bit. Your- Put your money down on over. Make it a little bit tougher. I mean, you know, come on, man. They should make it over two, one and a half or something like that. Over two and a half. Yeah, you know, just... Uh, just uh, f- final thoughts on CONCACAF? Yeah, I just, you know, I, I think I think CONCACAF has a chance to get blanked here. I I think, you know, once again, I picked... Uh, I picked... Um, how about this? Brandon Aronson. Brendan Aronson. Brendan Aronson. Over half a goal plus one seventy, under minus two. You think he's gonna score? Yeah, maybe. I think he's the start. I I think the I, I talked about this the other day in my meeting. I I think he come. I think he becomes the breakout star of this team. He's a Jersey kid. Yeah, Medford. I, I I would take over. I think he scores somewhere. I I think there's a better chance that zero teams get through than two teams get through. I, I don't know if that. You know, I, I, I just think um, they Well, you could, could play a parlay with all four of them not getting through. Yeah, it's actually pretty decent money, too. Uh, I think you, you probably, sometimes you can, you know, I, I think there's a better chance that zero teams get through. Now, I once again, I picked the USA to go through, but I think there's a better chance zero teams get through because you have Mexico, too. Yeah. But, like, I just don't know. 
Um, I think I think all these teams could struggle. I, I just I think Concacaf's a little down. Yeah, I I think it's important for one of them to get through with the next World Cup going Huge. to be in the United States, Mexico, Canada, with them them sharing it. Uh, I think it's important for one of them to get through into that that knockout stage. Now the U.S. has been pretty good when it's in the World Cup. Yeah, yeah. Right, the yeah. last two times it's been there, it got through to the knockout stage. Right, it lost yep. to, to Belgium two one uh, in in Brazil after extra time, uh, and then lost to to Ghana two one. And and I think that game was also an extra time. The last two times it went to the knockout stage. So yep. so the U.S. has been able to get out of the group of of late when it's in the World Cup. It's been that that round of uh, uh, 16 game that's been a problem. And actually, when the U.S. did get to the quarterfinals in, in 2002, it beat Mexico in the round of 16. Dos, right. Dos yeah. Zero, remember, yeah, in, yeah, uh, yeah. in South Korea? Yeah, take that, Myron. Go, goes by Brian McBride and, and Landon Donovan. And then, uh, you know, the, the quarterfinal where the U.S. really outplayed Germany that year. Yeah, that's uh, right. And, and yep. unfortunately, the Torsten Frings handball on the line didn't get called. Um, Oliver Kahn made a couple really big saves. I'm sorry. What happened with VAR? Yeah, wouldn't have happened with VAR, but I know I kind of kind of uh, went off on a tangent there and got sidetracked. But yeah, I, th- I think the U.S. team has been been pretty good in the World Cup. Um, you know, in terms of getting out of the group, they haven't played well in the two friendlies leading up to it. But I just I, I have a feeling, and my final thought on this is is once the lights go on and it goes live, these young guys are going to be ready to go and they're going to perform. Yeah, let's hope so because you know, once again we got to get somebody out of this group here. It'd be great for TV ratings too if uh, here in the U.S. You got it. Yeah, you got it. At least I, I, that's who I was just you know if the U.S. loses to Wales, all of a sudden they're man the ratings. Well, no, the rating the ratings are going to be good as long as the U.S. has got a chance in the last game to go through. Right, it's going to be it's going to do really well, and then if you get into the knockout stages, I mean, you're you're talking about big, massive yeah, yeah, numbers, yeah. particularly with the games being played at, at, at in the afternoon, and the Eastern time, o'clock yes. in the morning. Yes, it's a, it's in a good it's in a good time slot. Um, so yeah, de- definitely look looking forward to it. We'll see what happens. Um, we'll see if there's any concacafing as well at at the World Cup. Um, but this is Franco in the Genius World Soccer Betting Show. Uh, thanks again. We're presented. Remember, we're presented by Picks and Parlays, uh, and this was our Concacaf edition. And one more episode to go here tomorrow, Saturday. Uh, we're gonna go over the Golden Boot, Golden Ball, and then guess what? It's kickoff. We're ready to go. So t- tune back in, get your like, subscribe, ring the bell, so you can get this uh, as soon as it drops. And we will talk to you about all the different things that are gonna happen in this tournament. Thanks for watching the World Soccer Betting Show. Like and subscribe if you're new, and make sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms. Missed an episode? Our podcast is available on YouTube, Spotify, Google Cast, Apple, and more. The World Soccer Betting Show is presented by Picks and Parlays.